So I'm a solution architect with Altia. Um, still not good? Hmm. Okay. So um, I'm the technical point of contact for our prospects and customers in, uh, in Europe, the auto, mainly the automotive customers. And um, yeah, I advise them to how to use our products uh, for their solutions. Let's have a look at the agenda for this talk. Um, we will talk about the domain controlled cockpit concept. Um, we talk about how the software complexity will increase using this concept and how traditional development processes uh, might have a bad impact on this. And finally, let's have a look at low code, no code solutions and see how they could improve, improve situations. When we talk about automotive user experience, um, we see that customers are now demanding more and more functionalities in terms of ADAS, in terms of electrification, um, which increases complexity of software and which increases the amount of software that is being used inside the car. Plus, it increases the amount of information that needs to be presented to the driver, but as well to the passengers which results in many more displays in the car and even displays with touch interaction, for example. Alongside this, we are seeing that OEMs um, are trying to bring software knowledge and ownership more in-house. And also they have realized that the user experience is not only about you know, the, the look and feel and the materials of the car, but it's also about graphical user interfaces. And this is really a, a large value or differentiator for the brands. So let's have a look at the concept of a domain cockpit controller. And I think the probably best way is to have a look at a real world example. Um, what you can see here is uh, the new, uh, new release Cadillac Lyric, which is a fully electric uh, SUV. Um, you see a huge 33 inch um, LED display which is curved, spanning almost from the, uh, along the complete cockpit. And it shows, you know, different kinds of information, information related more towards the driver, but also information related, uh, for example, for the passengers on the, on the seat next to the driver. And by the way, that, that GUI was designed using Altia tools. So the basic concept of a domain controlled cockpit is that uh, you will now have one single SOC, so system on chip, that is able to control multiple displays. Displays such, such a like a cluster or a head-up display, um, the head unit containing the IVI, passenger displays, rear seat entertainment, uh, you name it. Even optical mirrors are replaced by cameras these days and then that requires another set of displays inside the car. Uh, we have to take care of that graphical content might be shared and synchronized between the different displays. And the question which comes up is why would I want to do this? Well, it's pretty obvious. It's mainly all about hardware consolidation. Um, if you think of a cluster having its own board to, to, uh, that controls the cluster display, you have a head unit, another board controlling it, you have a head up display, next board controlling it. So it would be nice to just have one more powerful board with the SOC that is able to handle all these displays. Now having multiple displays in, in the cockpit, um, you know, there are probably two types. One are the static panels which hold information that is critical or probably even safety relevant. And the others are the dynamic panels or displays where users probably even want to move content and share content between the different displays. And that means you would have to have a tool chain that also allows you to implement this. So just as an example, you want to move like the media content to the upper display and uh, probably swap um, the map content. This is an example or a demo that we have done for an integrated cockpit uh, with two displays. On the, on the left side, you will see a smaller display handling the, the cluster for the classical driver information. And on the right side, there's a huge display uh, more related to what passenger information. Um, the cluster, as well as the passenger display, both are designed using Altia design or Altia tools. The application logic or the behavioral, behavioral logic 
uh, is done with MATLAB Simulink. Uh, for the cluster especially, we are also using our tool chain for uh, presenting safety relevant information towards the driver. And we have a system where the cluster runs on a real-time operating system, uh, for example, Green Hands Integrity is just to name one, and where the, uh, the bigger display is being uh, used by Android mainly. Let's have a look at the requirements uh, for the passenger display, which are mainly dictated by the fact that a uh, connected operating system is running this display, uh, which handles the connectivity towards GSM, internet, or the Bluetooth devices being connected. And probably the second very important aspect is how to integrate third-party apps into that environment, because uh, yeah, users would like to to use their own navigation applications, their own media players, probably do some messaging services while driving. And I've mentioned this earlier, it's important that uh, content can be shared between the different displays. What you can see here is a, a Jeep Grand Cherokee cluster also done with Altia software, where the mapping information that comes from the head unit is shared with the cluster and presented uh, in, in the cluster towards the driver. Looking at the requirements for the functional displays, which are typically like the cluster or head-up displays, those are partly the same as with the infotainment displays, but now we have to take care about software robustness. Coding needs to follow different standards like MISRA. Um, you will mostly have or most likely have functional safety content being displayed in these displays. So you have to be sure that you have a tool chain that allows certification for ISO uh, 26262. Your software might need to follow uh, regulatory requirements from the different regions in the world. And as with every kind of software, and especially embedded software these days, cybersecurity is a, a very important topic. So in summary, one SOC driving multiple displays to save cost, but also, and we haven't talked about that, to enable the OAM to achieve the unified user experience across the different displays. Um, when we use that architecture, of course, we have to take care of multiple operating systems, uh, different graphical pipelines, plus uh, we have to take care of functional safety content. So the problem that this architecture brings up is that now embedded and graphic user interface engineers, they must produce more capabilities in less time, uh, which is really a challenge. And that fact is even fortified by a study or by a report done by McKinsey, which shows that the software complexity is you know, growing much, much faster than the productivity does. Uh, what they, they are stating it's like a three times quicker than the software complexity is, is rising than the productivity. So productivity always lags behind, which is mainly due to the challenge that we are seeing, handling security, handling connectivity, taking care about safety, how do we integrate third-party apps, and how do we handle multiple operating systems. Then, additionally, the traditional developers need to take care of non-traditional knowledge, let's say. So, if you think of the modern cars with modern clusters, you see that there's more and more 3D content inside. That means those developers need take, uh, have to take care about uh, you know, how materials are applied, uh, how do the shaders work, uh, which file formats are there, um, how can I compress textures to save uh, flash space, for example. But having multiple displays also means these displays are of different sizes. Uh, if you think of different models of a brand, um, sizes of displays may vary across the models, so you have to have uh, advanced layouting options. You know, you have to follow style guides, you are probably constrained by the operating system. Um, then developers need to integrate features like video streaming. Uh, that example from a Jeep Grand Wagoneer shows a night vision which is probably a combination of uh, handling video streaming and some uh, algorithms detecting objects, which then need to be displayed in a, in a proper, fun, uh, proper format. 
Um, yeah, we also see new technologies coming up like 3D displays. Uh, engineers would have to take care of special displays like head-up displays where you have warping effects to achieve a, a proper projection. So having said that, uh, this, and I think you will probably agree, embedded software and graphic user interface engineers are some of the most difficult uh, resources to find in the market. But with this approach, they are being given more tasks which are unrelated to their uh, specialities. And this dilutes their efficacy uh, for, for every engineer. Alongside this, using a traditional development appro um, approach, which is a fractured process, um, means that a, the development engineers, the sof software engineers, they receive their requirements from various departments in, uh, in, the, in the project or in the company. So they have a department for user experience providing them with assets, with uh, behavioral requirements. They have system engineers providing them with system requirements. They have quality engineers providing quality requirements. And they are all providing these requirements in a format which is typically on, on paper or uh, in some digital format or interactive tools like Figma, which are nice, but which are not, uh, cannot be used directly to achieve productivity code on an on a embedded device. This process is not only fractured, it's also a serial process. That means software engineers typically can only start their work after all the different departments have defined the requirements and have passed the requirements on to them. Um, which means the software teams have less time to do the actual work, uh, which introduces risks to the project and, and to the development process. Again, you will have different teams working on different pieces of software. Some will use Java, others will use C++. You might have a team working in ANSI C. They all get their requirements and at the end, everything has to run on one piece of hardware. So this is a challenge. So what's the solution? Um, yeah, share the load and decrease the code. By getting smarter about the tools that those engineers use, um, you know, they can increase the productivity and you know, create better and more quality uh, in their software. Now introducing a model-based approach, um, which is a, a, common, a common development methodology around the different displays. Let's assume you have two displays uh, on the left side, like a cluster or head-up display, on the right side, a uh, head unit, IBI display. Both displays can be designed using uh, fully graphical tools like uh, Altia Design for, for the UI or MATLAB Simulink for the uh, application logic. The advantage of these tools is that it's possible to simulate uh, the look and feel of the user interface and, and how it behaves. And you, know, you can present us this simulation to the stakeholders so they know how their product will look like before then finally creating code. That, that's part of our tool chain, creating hardware own and OS specific source code that really runs on the final hardware. Uh, appropriate for the right uh, operating system, but also for the right hardware. And that approach can be used for any display in the car using one and the same tool chain. So the, the model-based behavior really allows to abstract the interface to the graphical user interface, but also to the lower uh, part of the system, like the operating system and, and hardware. And which means also the OEM's knowledge uh, is abstracted from the hardware and the operating system. So that's, and also it's consistent across the complete cockpit. For example, this is a demonstrator that we have built. You can see on the right side here, that's Altia Design, where we have done a demonstrator with a media player on, on running on Android on the top, some seat climate control uh, interface running on Linux, uh, both designed in one environment, application logic done with different blocks in Simulink. 
And yeah, what we think is that the, you know, the model-based development process really fits well to this architecture of having a hypervisor running on top of a microprocessor, which allows uh, you know, proven and used real-time operating system run alongside um, the more big tech OSs like Android, iOS, potentially. And the RTOS part will control all the functional displays like cluster, heat controls, and also parts of the IVI, you know, which are critical. And still it would be able, or one would be able to use the, the features of like Android to integrate third party apps. So what you have to make sure is that you use a tool chain which can handle and generate graphical user interface code, uh, kind of portable, um, not agnostic to the underlying uh, operating system. Because with that, um, yeah, the OEM can achieve a common user experience and can implement its OEM branding into the different displays of the car. Two slides. <laughs> really the summary slides. Um, what are the benefits for development? Well, it's engaging the entire team. We have seen you don't have to create extra mockups or prototypes because it's already done in the tooling. Um, your embedded engineers can focus on how the software interacts with the, uh, with the hardware. The tooling allows you to deploy to Android as well as to real-time operating systems. And there are also business benefits. So same design, same development paradigm across all OS hardware configurations. Um, your team needs less training, which involves less tool costs and lower development costs at the end. Um, with higher quality, you can achieve faster time to market and obviously a better market penetration. So I try to rush <laughs> through this a bit, but um, yeah, thanks for, for listening. <laughs>